So there is the time capsule. I believe it's a, a ship's safe. Is that, was that right? Is yeah, that apparently. It's right? a very yeah. old one and it's from uh, Colbrookdale originally. Casting Colbrookdale, yeah. yeah. What could be better connection between the first time frame building in the world and something that was cast in Colbrookdale. So Alan, I guess we should introduce you You're from the Friends. I'm the chair of the Friends of the Flax Mill Maltings. We've been in existence for about 10 years and we set ourselves up to talk to the community about these wonderful buildings, to engage with them, to uh, develop uh, an awareness of what was going on here. Right guys, which school are you all from? Shrewsbury Cathedral Catholic Primary School. And what have you put in the capsule? Um, our we put poems. poems. Poems, yeah. And what did you think when you asked to, asked to put something in there? It's kind of a cool thing to be involved in, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Have, have any of you heard of time capsules before? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, and, <laughs> and Owen, you, you had the privilege of actually putting it in the box, didn't With you? With Mac. With yeah. Mac, yeah, cool. So you all know the building very well, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Rosebury. Yeah. So what would you like to see happen with the building? Um, become a gaming place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So become a food massive bar. museum for loads of people just to enjoy the artefacts. Yeah. So has it been good fun coming here today, taking yeah. part? Yes. Yeah. Well done, guys. Thank you. I'm Michael Brown. I'm from Northcott Brick, who's made the special bricks for Flax Mill Moldings. I said this brick's going in the capsule there, and just explain the initials there on the brick. These are the initials of the students from Shrewsbury College who have yeah. made this brick. Yeah. As an example, with our clay, we've taken it back to our brickworks in Gloucestershire, fired it at 1,000 degrees, and we're sure it'll last another 220 years, like the original Flaxville Maltings bricks. So any new bricks that are needed on the site, on the projects, you yes, guys are making yes. them, yeah? they've all been made by hand. Yeah. Uh, special shape, colour and size. And it could be anywhere between thirty to one hundred thousand. Still it's get the bricks, the bricks. Yeah. yeah. And this brick—it's quite a large brick. Can you? Is there a reason yes. that it's a? It's larger than standard size because at the time we understand there was a tax on the number of bricks built in, so they made the bricks larger to reduce the tax. Ah, very clever. Does that does that cause any um, any problems for you in terms of the firing process? Not being really. Large brick? It's a bit heavier to lift and throw when they originally throw yeah. the clay into the mould, but apart from that, uh, I think we were the only ones who were willing to make the, the, the shape yeah. and cover. <laughs> I'm Alistair Godfrey, I'm the project lead for Historic England, uh, leading the regeneration of this site. And I'm Councillor Nick Lawrence, portfolio holder for economic growth on Shropshire Council. Why is this building so important to the town and to, to the nation, really? Well, this is actually, it's, a, it's important to the nation and to the world, in fact. This is one of the world's first cast iron frame building, so it's the, wor the world's first building built with an internal structure so every every single skyscraper in the world can trace its DNA back to this building. It was actually world leading when it was built in 1797. Uh, it was built as a flax mill, uh, it lasted 100 years as a flax mill and then it went on to be a maltings for 100 years and we're here to celebrate today the next 100 years and the next 100 years will bring hopefully it back into uh, commercial use again. Uh, we're proposing within the building you're seeing behind us uh, ground floor which will be an interpretation and catering facility and on the upper floors we'll be delivering about 25,000 square feet of absolutely unique high quality commercial space which we like to use to encourage innovation and creative uses. And when all being well, when would we like to see that project finished? <laughs> Not all being well, it's going to happen and uh, we'll be handed a set of keys in uh, spring 2021, so it's only three years away. Yeah. And for those that don't know what the building was actually made for, if you could just briefly tell us what it used, what its purpose was back in the day. Well, when it was built in uh, uh, 1797, um, the reason it had a cast iron frame is because uh, mills up to that date actually burnt down on a regular basis. They built a traditional material, so you had timber frames out in within a, a brick a brick structure. And you can imagine the, the toxic sort of mix or inflammable mix of uh, you know, cotton waste or flax waste, tallow candles and very, very tired people uh, meant that there were frequent fires and uh, a huge loss of life. So this was built actually as a fireproof building. And from a, a council perspective, I mean, this building, a lot of people, I guess, wondered if this, anything was ever going to happen with this building at one stage. It's, to see it coming back to life again and work out, I mean, it must be, it's a good thing. It, um, well, I'm in a fortunate position. I've not been a councillor that long, and to, and to be here when this is happening is, is truly amazing. You know, it, it's the strategic site for us in Shropshire at the moment. Uh, we highlighted it at uh, an exhibition 
in France in March that it's it's the number one thing and to think what we may get inside there you know the technology that was there before was was groundbreaking and now we're talking to people digital healthcare universities all sorts of people it, it's just it, it's a really exciting time and the positioning in terms of the town that's going to tie in with the plans future plans for regeneration as yeah well. we're two weeks away from launching the big town plan uh, which a lot of people know about we've, we've done a lot of consultation with with 50, 53 different groups so people yeah. from the civic society to trusts and associations uh, friends of the flax mill historic england have all been involved and it was so important in that piece of work to make sure that the flax mill doesn't isn't regenerated and sits away on the hill. Um, it's got to be part of the bigger town. People think of the town as a river loop. Well, with the new connections of what we're beginning to call the Northern Corridor, the regeneration around the area that this can bring as well, it, it's a really exciting time.